Hi, this is Linda from Van Metal, and uh, here we have the uh, Power Chord uh, Radio DJ interview. And uh, first, we're going to start with our introductions here. Well, I'm Metal Ron. I uh, originated the show back in '85. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool to uh, think that the show has lasted this long. I mean, I never thought it would. <laughs> so, yeah, very cool. And and I am the Mistress of Metal, which I've been doing the show for the last three years, keeping the metal rolling with power cord, I guess you can say. Yeah, she's, she's done a great job. I mean, you know, this is uh, amazing. I don't know if anyone else uh, in all the people I've worked with had this kind of enthusiasm to get this kind of an event going. It's really cool, but it's a different world now. It's a lot easier to get this kind of media and that. I mean, I was talking to Marsha before and it's like, Back in the day, I just had to make lots of phone calls. You didn't have internet and all this stuff. And uh, now it's, it's just amazing how far reaching it can get. Before, it's like we were lucky if uh, people outside of the Vancouver area got to hear us. It was UBC, right? So now it's amazing. So yeah. Right on. And how did the idea of uh, doing a radio show featuring local um, band and global heavy um, metal now known as Power Chord get started? Well, I don't know, like, uh, you mean like the local band, the local scene? Well, I mean, when we started the show, um, my goal with it was to try and turn people on to different styles of metal and hear something out of the ordinary, not the kind of stuff you hear on the radio, and, you know, um, bring out the underground, let people know more about the underground and realize that some of the stuff that these corporations are pushing out are really good bands. You're missing some of the stuff that's really in the underground. When I started it was tape trading and I tape traded with all sorts of people all over the world. And a lot of the bands that I, uh, you know, was tape trading are now, uh, you know, fairly known because, uh, for instance, Metallica came out and they sort of made a lot of the bands known that I started with, like uh, Diamond Head, and Angel Witch and all the bands I guess they've covered so uh, yeah um, metals come a long way you know and now there's so many genres and subgenres I can't even keep up with it <laughs> but Marsha's uh, keeping the flag uh, going with the show which is great and I've got kind of an excitement to get back into it a little bit again so it's kind of a lot of fun this is really uh, quite a night actually I think with the uh the local point of view is Power Chord has lasted 25 years due to local listeners, right? So our, we've really tried to focus now, like after the 25 years, is really focusing on the local talent. I mean, right now on my brain, I have close to 30 bands that are in BC that are probably better than most of the bands I'm hearing that have already been signed. So we really want to, really, really want to trigger promoting these local bands because Canadian metal is so strong right now and I don't think a lot of people realize it and especially in Vancouver I mean we're not looked at as having the greatest nightlife but the metal scene we're like a family we are there for each other and the local scene is huge there's so much talent that we need to promote and that's what we're trying to do yeah I mean it's great I mean back when we were promoting the local bands which probably Anybody as old as me maybe would remember, now they're not really as known, but uh, there was a lot of originality coming out of Vancouver uh, back in the 80s, and a lot of those bands are considered cult bands now. One of my favorites is uh, Sacred Blade, and uh, although you know they're not like household name, you go uh, on the internet and look them up, and they're considered like a cult band. They were one of the first sort of speed metal yeah. bands in... Uh, you know, to do it. The same with, you know, around the time Metallica and totally Exciter and everything. Metal is kind of coming back. Yeah. I mean, we always said, you, you know, before when it started, it was this huge thing and then it kind of went down slope and then it's kind well, of... it went underground. And yeah. It always we're, does. We've always been underground, right? That's kind of the genre we're in. But right now, I feel it's starting to take a peak again. Like, we're starting to come back. People are starting to realize how much we are in the scene and how big we truly are. You have a band like Megadeth, or oh, yeah. any of these bands that come to town, and it's packed, sold out within within days. It goes to show, like... Yeah, it's amazing. It's I mean, base. Yeah, I mean, when I started, I had the Megadeth demo, you know, and to see them, you know, 
and selling out shows and uh, you know the band that I followed in the beginning was Iron Maiden back in 79 and I that's sort of what got the show uh, started I worked in a music store and I had a metal rack in the store and um, I put little cards wrote little things about the bands and I turned a lot of people on to uh, bands you know now are household names Iron Maiden um, Ozzy Osbourne Blizzard of Oz right after he left Black Sabbath now of course everyone knows Ozzy but back then nobody knew and you know back then people were going oh Eddie Van Halen was the greatest but then they heard Randy Rhodes and I said forget Eddie Van Halen you got your Randy Rhodes you know now of course that's just you know it goes without saying I mean everybody knows this stuff it's but uh, yeah super, it's just amazing super talent yeah. that's all it is and that's why power chord being 25 years is just so cool to know that we've been around for 25 years longer than any other station and we're metal because you want to know what there's not very many metal radio stations out there so to know that we've been you know yeah. starting 25 years we have old we have young we have yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just so cool. And the local, I mean, our goal is if we can promote as many local bands and that type of stuff, if they get signed and they move up and they, that's, we've known we've helped them. Yeah, right? oh yeah, for sure. Well, that's the way it was uh, back in the day. It was just a lot harder. It seems like a little easier now to get your name out there, you know. Back in those days, uh, you had to mail it's everything out. It's easier than it is Press right kits Right now, you go shit. on, you can search metal as a search song. Yeah, yeah. I can't keep up. Yeah, well, I, I just find it overwhelming, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's, that's a thing. Uh, Power Chord Radio started in uh, 1985, you know, uh, at the height of uh, hair metal and uh, yeah. classic metal, and uh, at the birth of Thrash. Um, you know, how, how did your show evolve over the last 25 years and, uh, you know, along with the metal scene in general? Well, I mean, uh, when we started, uh, as I was mentioning before, <laughs> off, off the air or whatever, um, we started the week that Metallica played here on the Ride the Lightning uh, tour, and James Hetfield was the first interview we did in his hotel. Next week was Raven. So we were sort of, you know, promoting the bands at that time, and then eventually Thrash got uh, a lot more popular. Testament and Heathen and bands like that and we were promoting that and you know we always tried to stay with what was going on um, I have to admit that uh, Gerald and I weren't quite as much into the beginnings of the death scene as you know it's become and uh, you know but people are carrying on that torch and I think that's great and you know I've come to appreciate a lot more now so I've never ever lost my love of metal um, I still love it to death uh, whether it be old new I you know it's my life you know okay it sounded up pretty good and uh, you power cord a radio broadcast once a week for two hours on a station based out of UBC. So it's uh, very much smaller than the mainstream radio stations um, in the city. Uh, what has reception for your show been like, and uh, are you happy with it? Well, reception has been not the greatest. Even people in Vancouver can't tune in, like on their actual radio. Still, eh? Even you still, they're having troubles. Back when. So actually, right now we've we just went through a changeover for a different frequency. So we're hoping that that's going to make a difference. But we really rely on our podcast. So it's like going into iTunes, you know, hitting your podcast link and hitting power cord. And you can, you can pick up podcasts that go all the way back from when Ron and Gerald were doing the show back way back when. And it's really cool because you can just record them. So we're really focusing on that aspect now that people are very internet savvy, that type of stuff. I mean, they can do the podcast, download it on their iPods, and it's more really focused that way nowadays than what it was before so yeah back back then I mean you know we were we were always wondering how many people are listening and we could always tell maybe by the phone calls <laughs> yeah. and the only time we could tell how many people were listening is when we gave away tickets yeah other than that uh, a lot of people wouldn't call and yet when we go to shows people would be like yeah I heard your show I love it it's like yeah. how come you don't phone in well I don't know I don't like phoning in I'm like okay you know that's fine so we're really not that happy with the frequency but we're super happy now that we've moved on to the internet yeah I mean I wish we had this when we started the show because yeah. I mean you know my enthusiasm for the show would have been twice as big if we could have promoted the show but 
I think because we always kept struggling to try and get the name out there and really wasn't getting too far, it just sort of never went, you know, till now. I mean, now Marsha's making our history known, which is very cool. Bringing it back. Yeah, bringing it back. And a number of uh, local bands have been uh, featured on Power Chord and have been interviewed as guests, uh, namely uh, Titan's Eve, uh, Scythia, uh, Entropia, Without Mercy, and Locrandis. Uh, would you say that featuring local bands on Power Chord is important, and why? It's super important. You know, the main reason I say it's super important is because we have the bands on, we support them, we give them the publicity, we go out, see their shows, and in return, the bands promote Power Chord. So it's really, like, like we work together as a team. So the more bands that we are looking at getting on Power Chord, they're really telling their friends, hey, tune into Power Chord. You know, they're telling other bands that they know of, check out Power Chord, you can go on, get an interview, I mean, since we've done this local interview, like we've really pushed, now I'm finally getting flooded with emails from bands saying they want to come in. Before it was us called, like, searching the bands out ourselves. So we're looking to find the band. Now, what we're really trying to do with this show and really bringing bands on is for bands to search us out, to say, okay, we get on there, we get on a show, we get in that type of stuff, right? So it's kind of really, we help each other out, which is kind of what we're looking at. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, uh, we used to we used to really uh, try and promote local bands as much as we could. We used to go to a lot of shows. Um, our uh, One of our previous uh, DJs, Dr. Damage, as we called him, Dwayne, um, he, uh, he was very much, Maybe not quite as enthusiastic as uh, the Mistress of Metal here, but uh, he really tried really hard to get bands out there, to get people to come out to local shows and that. And I think he got really discouraged after a while, you know, um, which is really too bad because he really had that enthusiasm. He really wanted people to come out and see the bands. And, you know, like I listen to a lot of those bands, even their demo tapes now, and I still think, man, you know, we had a lot of originality out there. Like, you know, there were a lot of bands that people probably now wouldn't know, but like Beverly Soul Crusher, uh, Lunch Bucket, um, you know, I'm trying to think of some of these old bands. Um, bands yeah. Heard? Yeah. that are signed and huge and making tons of money and then we see these local bands play and they're way better than these bands and it's just like why did this band make it and not this one so that's what we're trying to focus on we're like we got to start really showcasing these bands to help them move to where these other bands are that maybe had more connections more money whatever it took right but we have so much talent it's i can't even fathom so good. Really? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, it's, it's so good. And um, also, uh, uh, we've uh, noticed that Power Chord is uh, known to feature new material from bands from around the world. Um, in your opinion, um, what, uh, which has been the most uh, unique or surprising band to emerge in recent memory, say in the last five to ten years? Well, I don't know. Um, like I say, I mean, I'm pretty old school. The, the band that blew me away in the last while, and now they're not so maybe innovative, was uh, Mastodon. I thought they were uh, really cool because they sort of brought a lot of old elements and um, very, very heavy. And being also, you know, besides metal, I mean, I love all sorts of music, and I've always been into, like, progressive rock and that. They brought a lot of that kind of prog into that excellent band. Um, so they were the band that sort of uh, did it for me. And also, um, I guess in recent years, now they're, you know, everybody knows them as Opeth. I really like uh, what they've been doing. They're amazing, you know. Um, and then you've probably got some bands that... Uh, Right now, for me, to be very honest, I'm very focused on Canadian metal. It's like I can focus on the States, I can do, there's so much stuff internationally, there's so much, but I'm really focusing on the Canadian content. And it's realizing that can Canada is, we're breeding lots of great talent, and we're not getting, we're not really getting recognized on the map the way we should be. And I'd like to say, um, into eternity, 
Oh, is they were they were one of my super absolute good. favorite bands. Super good. good. Congratulations for Stu for getting into yes. Iced Earth. That's amazing, you know. I mean, come on. But like when, these when, talents yeah, are I, huge. They slipped my mind. Into Eternity was definitely and then when their first album came out or second album came out. I was blown away. Yes. I was like, holy, these yeah. guys are incredible. Yeah. You know. And then even you know, even though they're not playing anymore, Strapping Young Lad. Oh yeah. Kicked ass. And even now, Devin Townsend, well, Townsend's, he's doing Devin's his own huge, projects. Yeah. But, you know, he goes back to Steve Vai, like doing all of the great guitar work. Like it's just. And know, I worked with Devin. We can say heavy. Yeah, yeah. But the talent, you don't need to be heavy to be metal. You know, exactly, this is yeah. the way we look at it. It's just the talent, and it's just like we're looking at the Canadian. It's just like, you know, and. Um, there's one I'm thinking of, City of Fire with uh, Byron and oh, the Fear Factory. Fear Factory. Yeah, yeah. So they're breeding a new, we're seeing a lot of these huge bands separating and making other Canadian bands. It's just like our talent goes beyond what anybody really realizes. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, maybe they're old school, but uh, that Anvil movie def definitely didn't hurt either. <laughs> and it's funny because, like, uh, they were also one of the first bands that I had in my metal rack, and uh, I used to promote the heck out of them because, I mean, for a Canadian band to be that heavy, and, you know, still to this memory to this day, back when there weren't metal shows really in Vancouver at the Commodore, that show, anyone who's old enough to remember this, um, Anvil uh, opening for Girl School at the Commodore. That show was so heavy. And I mean, it was amazing. And Anvil were unbelievable. And yet, the Canadian bands never. You're got talking a break. to a guy here who's interviewed Ronnie James Dio. Well, I never interviewed him, but well, I've met still, him, and it's like he's so one of the nicest. So many, so many big names this guy has met and yeah. talked to, and it's just, it's surreal. Yeah, he he nice. was he was a perfect gentleman. He was the greatest Very guy. Nice guy. He, I remember the first time that I met him because I was such a big fan. I went and saw the uh, Holy Diver tour in Seattle, and it was Queen Drake opening for him. And they didn't have their first uh, the Warning out yet. They only had their EP out, so they actually played some songs in the Warning. And we were out um, hanging out at the hotel, waiting to meet the band. And Dio came out with the band, and um, he sat with us for at least an hour, taking pictures, um, signing autographs, just talking. And then when Dio came out here and played uh, the old Studebakers, he was out there and talked to everybody, and just the nicest guy, you know, like he totally cared. And as you can see by all the interviews and everything that's gone on about him, he even remembered people's names, which is just amazing to me. Oh, sorry, we're radio hosts, we yeah. talk a lot. I do, especially. <laughs> Gerald was worse. Gerald was worse. Sometimes I really had to shut we'll him up. We'll move on to the next question. Yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, what does the future hold for Power Chord Radio and metal in general? That it lasts forever. Well, it seems like it will right. now. I mean, uh, Power Chord's still going. Is um, it whether Ron's here, whether I'm here, yeah. whether whatever, that someone else will come along and say, I love metal, I want to do this. And, and keep it going, right? Because it's it's a forever music, you exactly. know? It's a music that is just, it's timeless, you know? Um, I still run into people who don't listen to, you know, metal as much, and, uh, you know, they've got kids, you know, families and all that, but they still have fond memories, and they still go back and maybe listen to some of the old stuff. I mean, you know, metal is just a great music. Like, it's like I said, it's intelligent music, um, it's, it's been political. It's very political. And, and nowadays, very with the you know. end of world and all of this stuff going on, metal really triggers on all of those aspects. Everything that we're doing wrong, so many metal bands are pointing out. And exactly. that's the awesome part of it. Exactly. And you, you know, it's. We're um, nerds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, we're super nerds. Metal nerds. That we're always outcasts in high school. We're always, you know, the different ones. We're smart. But we I'll tell you one thing that love. has not changed in all the years that I've been into metal is that you can go up to anybody, perfect stranger, if they have a shirt, you know, of a band that you like, you know, it's like, oh man, like, Artillery, that's awesome, you know, and automatic, you know, friend, yeah. fan, whatever. That's always been that way. I, I've been in Seattle and I've run into people and people are just 
automatically like you know it's like part of the family you know it's like and how many music genres can you find that with yeah. you know I mean, we've always been kind of triggered as the outcasts right yeah so when we do see each other it's kind of like we bond immediately and 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 it's it's fun too like metal is fun it's not supposed to be it's all angry and that but it's also an escape you know the the world like you talk about you know and the jobs and everything that goes on with this world it's also an escape to come to a concert and you know go crazy and better to do that here than out in the streets where you're gonna <laughs> and i definitely want to say with being a female and doing power chord i've been the first female to ever get into like to do the show well yeah Was a long another? time ago we had one girl who did it yeah um, we but called I mean, her space metal Sam, and she was our. She answered the phones because she was into metal. It's showing more but now, yeah. more and more nowadays with the female. Yeah, like, well, it's, definitely. We're, we're coming through. We're you know, you're seeing the female guitarists, the bass players, the lead singers, the hosts. The all I have the to say that awesome. one of my one of my favorite bands right now, and I'm not knocking the mighty Iron Maiden, but I absolutely love the Iron Maidens, and they've tried to come here three times. If you've ever seen a bunch of girls play like uh, it's it's amazing close your eyes you close your eyes and you'd swear it's made and I mean the the singer Christian even sounds like Bruce and they do songs that you know they do songs that I wish and any Maiden fan wishes Maiden would do but maybe we stick to that. You know, that's another story, you know. But but anyway, um, yeah, I've really noticed that. Back when we were doing the show, we'd go to shows and uh, the, the, the bands would look out and they'd go, are there any girls here? You know, it'd be all guys, right? You know, and now very, it's very, it's totally very, changed very and it's a sausage great. fest. Yes, oh yeah. <laughs> I guess you can call it that, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. And I have to say, and I have to say, local band, local band without without mercy. Holy hell, Alexis Ness kicks ass. She beats more females and even dudes with her vocals, like hands down. Who's this? Without mercy. Without mercy. Remember, I let you listen to them on yeah, the show. Yeah, and what about we the band that we were gonna have tonight, and they didn't? Play? Or I was really impressed when I listened to some of their stuff. I was like, yeah. She's doing all the vocals? Like she was doing clean and... Oh no, Aurox all dudes. Oh, did, what? Yeah, there's no girls. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, am I showing my age here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> it's in, it's in, yeah, Unleash the Archers has a female. Okay, okay. See, that's what we're saying. There's so many local bands, we're getting confused. You, you right? can edit this, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, go. Any, any like uh, final uh, thoughts or comments? Well, um, you know, thanks a lot to you guys for uh, putting this out there, letting people know about us. Um, you know, like uh, like I said, if it weren't for the enthusiasm of uh, the Mistress of Metal here, um, Power Chord would sure. just maybe get known by uh, some of the old gang that I used to know, you know, and, and she's letting the younger people know about it and keep the legacy going and keeping the metal happening and letting Van people know that Vancouver is a metal town because for a long time we struggled to even get bands here because bands would go oh I don't know I don't know if they draw very many people and you know it, it would, we'd have to go to Seattle all the time but thanks to even Invisible Orange and Mayo yes. that's also Mile awesome rocks. Yes. And of course, Scrape Records, JJ's got a metal store. Yes, I mean, awesome. record stores these days are like, I mean, that's where I came from and I'm, you know, my livelihood is gone basically. But Scrape Records, an independent heavy metal store, there aren't a lot of those around anymore, like anywhere really. Used to be one in Seattle, I don't know. I think Easy Street Records is still around, but otherwise there isn't. But that's where we used to go to buy all our stuff, Seattle. See, we have also thanks for the old schoolers who started stuff like this, like let us, the younger generation, continue on. Do you want chocolate? No, we're good. Do you see that shoe? No. Who was that? That's the power of the female. Get out of here. <laughs> who was that? <laughs> But yeah, no, it's the, it's the guys, I mean, Ron, 
and Gerald, they put a lot of effort into starting the show. I mean, back then it wasn't that easy. Like, no, I mean, trying. you know, but but and we even, even still to this day, we're a genre. We're the only state. We're the only metal station that's on CITR that's metal. And that like, surprised me because I really shows, thought like, that indie techno. All yeah, and I really stuff. thought with all the subgenres that someone would start an extreme metal show. No one ever did. I was really surprised. So Maybe power I will. Chord, well, no, we got to keep power. But chord you want to know what? I, I wanted to do my own show, but I like the fact of the history behind power chord, and I kind of wanted to be involved with the historical aspect of it. And even though how young I am, I love so much old stuff that I. I and this is wanna. what this is what I want to put across, and one of the reasons I start a power chord and still, you know, instill this is, I want people who are younger to know where the history came from, and exactly. don't just listen to a certain era and forget about where it came from because a lot of people do, and you know I think it's really important to know where stuff comes from, because otherwise you know you can be very close-minded, and I found that with a lot of the the kids in my era, they were just very close-minded, like they just liked metal, they wouldn't listen to anything else, you know, they wouldn't listen to some of the influences, and now the bands that I grew up with are now like household names, and they're considered the old school, which still blows me away, you know, but um, yeah, long live metal. don't forget the history. And long live long power live chord. Metal, long live power chord. That's right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Van, Van Metal. Thanks. And we thank you for uh, being at our uh, interview. Uh, Van Metal, thanks, uh, Power Chord, and appreciates the effort on keeping metal strong in the community of Vancouver. For sure.